Amanda, and I'm here to share with you a fun, simple project that is an excellent place for a beginning sew and start with. These are the Portlander pants from New Horizons Designs. They are nice fitted pants through the hips and thighs, and they flare a little bit at the bottom of the leg. They're excellent for loungewear, they're excellent for pajamas, and you can even use different fabrics to make them workplace friendly. So today, I'm going to sew a pair with you. Let's talk about what you need to get started with these pants. You will need a knit fabric for the actual pants themselves. Today I'm gonna to use a poly rayon spandex French terry, but you just need to choose a fabric that has at least 35% stretch, which means that when you start with it, it will stretch 35% at the very least. If it doesn't stretch enough, they won't fit after you get them on. Um, you will also need a fabric for the waistband of your pants. Today I'm going to use double brush polyester, but you can use any fabric that has at least 50% stretch for this. There's no elastic in the waistband. They rely on the stretch of the fabric to stay on, so it's very important to use fabric that has enough stretch. There's other fabrics you can choose to use. For the waistband, instead, you could use a ribbing fabric as long as the ribbing fabric has good recovery. Not every ribbing fabric, tubular ribbing fabric has great recovery. Some of them are a little bit looser. Recovery means that it bounces back. So think of a strong rubber band. Um, you could also use athletic fabrics. This is one from Joann's. The athletic fabrics are great because they usually have super great recovery. And they also have a little bit of compression in them too. So it helps to keep your waistband nice and tidy. It's kind of like wearing a little pair of spanks secretly. Another good fabric to choose from is a cotton lycra fabric makes for great um, waistbands because it's just a nice sturdy fabric with good recovery. For the pants themselves, you can also choose to use a rayon spandex fabric. It's a little bit lighter weight than the one I'm using. Um, you could use a cotton lycra French terry like this one. It has little loops on the back and it has a smooth front. Cotton like or French terry though tends to not drape as much and the fabric does call for something with a little bit of drape. So these might look a little bit stiff on. You could use a bamboo like a fabric. This makes for a really soft and silky pair. You could use Liverpool fabric that has a little bit of a texture to it. These would end up looking a little more formal, I'd say. The, but the fabric itself is also very soft and squishy. So excellent choice to make. Or I made a pair for my daughter out of velour fabric. It makes it look like uh, a really awesome tracksuit. But for beginner friendly version, I do suggest sticking with something a little bit heavier weight than like a rayon spandex um, or bamboo because they might be a little bit harder to work with or a little bit more slippery. And also probably not using anything that has plaid or lines for your very first project because it could be hard to match up stripes and plaids. You'll also need, besides your fabrics, you're gonna need the pattern. You'll have to print it and tape it up or you can print it A0 if you have that available to you. There is a front piece. There is a back piece. There's also a waistband piece. The pattern itself also has an option to do pockets. We're not gonna do pockets or the drawstring today. We're just going to use um, the front, back, and the waistband. I will say the drawstring on the, the pants is an option you can create. Um, you'll need eyelets for it, but the drawstring is purely decorative. You do not need it to keep your pants up. So um, once again, it relies on the stretchiness of the fabric you use for your waistband. Some other things you might want to have are some pins or clips, depending on which camp you're in, which one you want to use. Scissors, good fabric scissors, or a rotary cutter and a mat. I choose to use a rotary cutter and a mat usually um, because I'm just not as accurate when I cut the scissors. So let's go ahead and get started. The first thing we're going to do is cut our, our fabrics. So. I will start by cutting out my waistband. The waistband has to be cut on the fold. So, a couple important things. It marks on your fabric piece the stretch and the grain line. The grain line goes the same direction as the selvage of your fabric. If you find the selvage of your fabric, it's the factory edge of the fabric. It normally has little dots on it from where it's fed through the machine when it's created. The stretch goes the opposite direction of the grain line and pretty much every knit fabric. 
There's also a wrong side and a right side to your fabric, but right now that doesn't really matter. We'll talk about that while we're constructing. So I'm gonna fold it over. Because I need to cut this piece on the fold, I'll make sure there's no nice or no wrinkles or anything and it's nice and smooth. I'm gonna place my pattern piece where it says place on fold. I'm gonna match that up with the fold of my fabric. Double brush poly tends to kind of stick to itself as you're using it. So I'll smooth it out again here. Now I'll double check that my grain line line is going the same direction as my selvage. And the stretch goes across in the direction it says stretch. I'll go ahead and cut that piece out. We only need one of these. I'll cut out one piece on the fold. And that is our waistband. We'll get to that in a minute. Let's set that aside. Next, we're done with our waistband fabric. Now let's cut out the front and back of our pants. I am choosing a fabric that doesn't really have a direction. There's no up or down on it. So it's easier to work with. For both the front and the back piece, we're gonna cut with the fabric folded over yet again. Not because we need to cut the piece on the fold, but because we need both a right and a left leg. And I find that it's easier to cut with the fabric folded, so I make sure I do a mirror image and have a right leg and a left leg instead of two rights or two lefts. So first, I'll fold it over. Once again, I'm making sure that my selvage is going the direction that I'll place the grain line. We'll smooth it out. Make sure I don't have any wrinkles. Now I'll cut. This is the back leg. I'm trying to conserve fabric and fold it over a little bit less. So by cutting it on the fold, like I have it here, I'll end up with two pieces identical to each other, except there'll be mirror images. So my grain line here matches up with the selvage. They're both going the same direction. You wanna be careful to not tilt your piece at all on your fabric because that can make it kind of twist on your body as you wear it. Yes. And also you want to make sure that the stretch direction is going the direction it says stretch on your pattern piece. So this piece is a little bit bigger. I'll use some pattern weights to hold it in place. My pattern weights are just washers from Home Depot, nothing fancy. You can get some cute ones out there, but this works for me. We'll cut this piece out. I'm making this pair for my daughter because she needs pants more than anybody. She just keeps growing taller and taller every single day. I do suggest if you have a child to sew for, whether your own child, a niece, nephew, grandkid, that if you're new to garment sewing, start sewing for them first because they're a lot more forgiving if you make a mistake and they also use a lot less fabric when you create things. So now I have two pattern pieces that are identical to each other, a front and a back, or a right and a left leg, but they're both the back leg of the pattern. Set those aside, one more piece to go. We're gonna cut the front leg. After you cut them out, it can sometimes be hard to tell which one's the front and the back, but the front leg is a little bit smaller than the back leg. You can see that on the pattern pieces. You'll see on the pattern pieces, but the back is just ever so slightly taller than the front. So after you have them cut out, you'll be able to tell them apart.
So I lay out my front pattern piece, same as the back. Once again, I'm gonna make sure that my grain line and my selvage that I cut off just a second ago, but I'm gonna make sure that those are parallel to each other before I cut and make sure that the stretch is going the correct direction. pieces out again so lay out your back pattern pieces on your work surface right side up now find your front pattern pieces and you can tell which way the top and the bottom is because it's a crotch curve you're gonna match them up to the back pieces, right sides down. So you see the wrong side of the front and the right side of the back. We'll know that I have them matched up properly because the front and the back will look different from each other, right? Because the front is a little bit smaller. And you'll see that the crotch curves are both on the same side as each other. That way I know I have the right leg with the right leg and the left leg with the left leg. So now I'm going to use clips instead of pins because I prefer clips. I'm going to start at the top on the outside, the outside opposite the crotch curve. I'm going to clip at the very top. I'm also going to clip at the very bottom. Now I'm going to clip somewhere in the middle and then make sure I match up in between there. I'm gonna line up these raw edges very carefully. By the way, all New Horizons Designs patterns have a three inch seam allowance included. Um, so you do not have to add your own seam allowance or anything like that. So now I have the outside clipped on one leg. I'm gonna do the same thing for the other leg. Use as many clips or pins as you find necessary. You might find that you don't need as many as I do, or you might find that you want to use way more than I do. Personal preference is all about just making sure everything stays lined up. So starting with the top and the bottom first, and then we'll clip in the middle, clip again, so that everything's perfectly lined up. Now I'm ready to sew this seam. I'm gonna use a serger to construct these pants. The serger, when it sews, the needles take up a quarter inch of space. So my blade will cut off an eighth of an inch to make sure I get my seam allowance. Also, I do suggest testing out your serger settings on a scrap piece of fabric, the same fabric you're using for your project, to make sure that all your settings and tensions are correct. Make sure it's sewing properly. So I'll go ahead and get started sewing. So now that we've sewn up, the out seam and the inseam. We should have two pant legs that look kind of like big long tubes of fabric. Take one of them, it doesn't matter which, and turn it so it's right side out. Starting to get a glimpse of what our pants are gonna look like. Now we're gonna take that one, I like to put it on my arm to do this step, with the top towards me, and find the top of the other pant leg 
take the one that's right side out and tuck it inside the one that's wrong side out. Now you'll have a U-shaped curve for the crotch. See? Find that U-shape curved on both and match those up. It's a good idea here to go ahead and nest your seams. And what that means is have one seam go one direction and the other seam go the other direction so that there's less of a bump when you're sewing over it. So match that point right there first. Then you'll match up the back of this curved center seam. And go ahead and put a pin or a clip at the very top and another one or two in the middle. And then same thing at the front. First we match the very top. And then another one somewhere else. So now you have this U-shaped curve that you've clipped together. And next we're gonna sew that. Once you've sewn that U-shape, your pants are almost done. We're gonna pull that leg back out. And we're gonna turn them. We should have almost a completed pair of pants, wrong side up. And now we're gonna turn to our waistband. Now we didn't talk about this before because it's pretty obvious to tell where the right side and wrong side of the floral fabric I used is. But sometimes it can be hard to tell the right side and wrong side of our fabrics. So the right side of your fabric has little V shapes on it, whereas the wrong side would have like straight lines, but sometimes those are microscopic and you can't really see. You can also, most fabrics when you tug on them a little bit, will curl towards the right side of the fabric. So that's another trick you can use. But if the fabric's almost impossible to tell right side from wrong side, Chances are nobody else can tell the right side from wrong side either, unless they're looking at your pants way too closely. So don't panic if you use the wrong side out. If Nina Garcia ever tracks you down and yells at you for it, you can just say it was a design choice. It was on purpose. So, for your waistband, you're gonna make sure that you have it stretch going this way, and you're gonna clip those short ends together because we're going to sew our waistband into a circle at this point. So we clip the short ends and we made sure that the stretch is going this direction. The clips are on that side. So we'll just sew that into a loop. So now you've sewn your waistband into a loop. Now the waistband is a yoga waistband which means it's has the ability to be folded down when you're wearing it. Or you can leave it straight up. But now we're gonna take our waistband, we're gonna fold it so that the wrong sides touch. I like to start at the seam I just sewed and match that up. Put a clip or a pin there. And then work my way around to the other side and keep doing that. So that the raw edges that are left match up. Once we have it all the way matched up, all the, all the raw edges, we're gonna find the other side. So this is the center back where that seam is. And then we're gonna mark where the center front is by having it laid flat so we can find the other side. So we'll put a clip there as well, or a pin. I think my reluctance to use pins comes from my mom used to sew and she'd leave pins all over the floor and I'd step on them and I'm kind of scared. Okay, so now we have the center front and the center back marked. We're going to turn it. So it's going the other direction. We're going to match the center front and center back to each other like so, so that we can see the quarter points on the other side. Now I'm going to put a pin or a clip on each of those quarter points. 
making sure that my raw edges match up. So there's one on that side, and then one on the other side. So now we have a pin or a clip at one quarter all the way around the waistband. So we'll take our pants wrong side out, go ahead and put them so the back is on the bottom and the front is on the top. You can tell the back from the front because the back will come up higher than the front. Find the center back of your waistband and match it to the back seam of your pants, right sides together. seam of my pants and that's the center back of the waistband where I just sewed it together. Now I have the waistband so the raw sides are up, it's not twisted, and match the center front, the pin on the opposite side to the center front of your pants. So now we've marked, we have it clipped both sides of back and at the front of the pants. These other clips are gonna to match to the side. I like to push the seam to the back as I clip them. So I'm going to clip the side to the quarter point on either side. Now I have four clips attaching my pants to my waistband. You'll notice that there's a lot of extra fabric for the pants compared to the waistband. And that's on purpose because we want the waistband to stretch to fit on the pants. That's what keeps them up. So if you want to, at this point, you can add more pins or clips, especially if you're making them in a bigger size than I am for my daughter. What you'll want to do is you'll hold it so the waistband is up, stretch it just until it meets the fabric below of the pants. Do not stretch the pants fabric, and then you can clip again in between if you want. When you're sewing it, it's best to sew it so that the waistband is up, so that you stretch the waistband to fit the pants, but don't stretch the pants themselves. If you stretch the pants and the waistband, both of them, you'll get some wavy seams that you don't really like. So I'm going to go ahead and attach my waistband now to my pants. So now we have our waistband attached to our pants. And if you're like me and you use the serger, you have a serger tail, so here's a little trick for you. I like to use an embroidery needle, which is a very blunt needle, it's not sharp. It has a super large eye to the needle. I like to thread my loose serger tail through that, and then thread it back through the seam I just did. Pull the tail through and then snip it there to secure the end. So now the only thing we have left is to hem our pants so we get to turn them right side out and see how they turned out. Not so bad. So we creased that earlier where our hem is gonna be. So all we have to do is fold it back along that crease I use pins here, reluctantly. And we're gonna pin that all the way around. I like to start at the side seam, the outer and in seam, and then pin in the middle to make sure I'm not twisting it as I'm pinning it or tugging it in any way. If you're new to hemming, there are some things you can do to make your life a little bit easier. We could use this wonderful invention called Wonder Tape. And what it does is holds everything in place for us. It's kind of like sticky double-sided tape for fabric. All you do is you stick it to your fabric and iron it in place. We iron it once over the backing, then we can peel it off. 
seal that up, and we'll leave sticky amount behind. And then that way, when we fold this up in place, we'll hold it in place for us. Now it's pretty much already cut for you. And it kind of stabilizes it a little bit so when you put it through your machine. Another thing you can do if you want it to hold in place is you can just use a, a glue stick like you'd use for craft, a regular kids school glue stick. You can use that to hold it in place. And then when we go to sew this, chances are you're using a machine. So make sure that you use a proper needle for it, a stretch needle, use one the right thickness for the fabric you're using. Since this is a lighter weight fabric, I'd want to use a 7511 or something like that. The higher the number, the thicker the fabric. You could also use a twin needle and that'll make it a little more professional finish. So now I'm going to do my hem on my sewing machine. I'm going to select a zigzag stitch for my hem. You could also use a lightning bolt stitch or a triple stitch or a triple zigzag even. There's lots of different stitches you can use that would have some stretch to them. You can play around with them on your machine. Um, I'm going to use a simple zigzag. Uh, make sure you have the correct needle in for the type of fabric you're using, which would be a stretch needle, a ballpoint needle trick to make sure that you're lined up where you want to line up. You can put a little piece of tape or a magnet to show I want my hem to hit this, catch this piece of fabric, but I want to sew on the other way. So I'm going to line up with the edge of my uh, needle plate right here when I'm sewing. I also like to start and stop at the inseam because that's the least visible part, so that's the least pretty part of the project. You don't really need to back stitch or anything when you're starting because you're going to be going all the way around and you can catch it at the end. Sometimes sewing machines don't like back stitching on knit fabrics. Um, so that's a way you can keep things looking nice and neat. You could just not back stitch um, at the beginning or end and just tie a knot instead. Okay, so I'm gonna start at this center end seams. I'm gonna make sure I'm not sewing over needles. As you sew, make sure you don't tug your fabric through your machine because that will create a wavy hem. Let your machine do the work for you. Sometimes it'll kind of hang up a little bit over a bump and you can kind of lift the presser foot to help it along, but don't tug on it. Notice as I'm sewing, I don't even have a hand in the back of the fabric. I'm just guiding the fabric through in the front to keep from stretching it. And I'm feeling to make sure that my um, fabric is lining up with the inside edge of my foot here. When you get back to the beginning, I like to go ahead and trim the threads from starting. And then try your best to match up you can tie a knot by hand instead of back stitching if you prefer. And there we have our hem. Knit fabrics don't unravel in the wash and the zigzag stitch will help it too from unraveling. So you don't really have to worry about that raw edge on the inside. Repeat for the other leg and then you're done with your pants. And there we have it, a completed pair of Portlander pants. If you went ahead and sewed these along as well, Make sure you share them in our Facebook group at New Horizons Design and tag us if you share them on Instagram. And happy sewing!